Hi, my name is Roy Steiner and I worked on the design of various equipment and I'm going to show you how to put the power takeoff or the, the belt drive onto our units, which is the first thing you'll need to do before you put any attachment that is powered out the front. I've already removed the shield here from the front and I loosened all these bolts so I can quickly take them off because this front shield needs to be removed for the belt to enter the engine area. So we'll take this off and this is not needed anymore. And we'll set it aside. And now we have this shield here, which when it goes on here, allows for, for the belt drive to work. You will receive this package, a mechanism that looks much like this. And this is this unit here. I have it mounted already. You will need to remove two bolts and bolt this up to these two bolts here. You can use the same bolts, leave the washer out on this one so that the bolt doesn't come any closer to the belt. Unfortunately, you'll need to unloosen the, the belt a little to, to get it off, so uh, slide the engine back a little bit so you can get this bolt in. And then this is the tightener for the belt. But for right now, we will put it clear up as I have this one up now. That gives us our various positions. Also, you will get a finger to hold the belt down and right here it is on this one. This finger bolts in here and you can adjust this up and down. There's two nuts on here, one on the bottom, one on the top and you can adjust it up and down so that this finger clears this pulley by uh, an eighth of an inch, three or four millimeter. It must clear that belt and yet when the belt is loose, the belt will push up against it and we don't want the belt riding in the tight in, in the pulley of the engine. So you must make sure that there's a little bit of room for that belt to push up, and yet it doesn't push up so far that it'll want to catch. That's the purpose of this finger. In addition to that, I didn't tell you, but here's the pulley. The pulley needs to go on where this pulley is, and there's a real short key here that can be put in there, and of course you need to tighten that set screw down tight when you get the pulley on. Push it on as far as it'll go, and that'll be its location. These here should, this pulley should line up with this one. Uh, it can be adjusted some with more or less, more or less flat washers back here on the back side. Or as you can see here, there's a number of flat washers in there and it's set to be the approximate location to feed the belt back to the attachment. That's pretty well it for what has to happen here and I'll just put this shield on again. I do have this bolt removed. I should have left it in, but I didn't. Uh, and so this bolt can go back in and of course this shield needs to come off every time you attach a new attachment or take it off. Otherwise you can just let this like this and wait till the next job comes around you need an attachment and then just take the shield off, put the belt on, put it back together and we're ready to go. And now we'll go to the various attachments. We're now going to install the peanut sheller to the tractor. We hook it up much the same as we do all the other attachments. You have to remove the shield from the engine. Have a pin ready to put in, bring the two together. Slide them together so you can drop the pin in. And then we need to lock it. I encourage you to do, let the stand on the machine down just in case something would uh, slip somewhere. It's just a good security. Make sure the belt is on at each end and on this machine you can actually open this shield up and check to make sure that the belt is on everywhere like it's supposed to be. Lift it up. Slip it on. Close the shield back up. It's ready to go. All is good. We'll put the shield back on. Tighten it down.
and it's ready to run. I'll do a little explaining about this machine. And to do that, we will look at it from the other side. I'll show you the principle by which this works. Inside here, we have four beater bars. There's some peanuts in it now, you can see. And we have these units that fly out. We actually have several different positions so that you can learn what works best for the size and type of peanut you have. And the screens can be taken out. That's a little left over from last time. This screen has a code on it. There's five notches and five notches and one. That means five, 10, 11. That's 11 millimeter opening here. That's the size I have in right now. With this machine, we'll come four more. And if you look at the opening, this has 12 notches. It's 12 millimeter spacing. This one's 10 notches, it's 10 millimeter spacing, nine millimeter and eight millimeter. So you can slip in the one that works best and they go in either direction. It doesn't matter which way, they're, they're coated on both sides. Once that's in, you can close it. Latch it tight. Fill this up with peanuts. Start the machine up and this machine has a fan in to, to blow the shell away from the peanut. And it's kind of a critical air speed that we need. So by adjusting the engine speed, we can get the air to flow about right. You can look in here and, and, the, and the chip will come out here and we'll slip the bucket under here to collect the peanuts from the other side. If you run it too fast, you'll get too many peanuts coming out here. If you run it too slow, you'll get too many hauls on the, in the peanut. So work on engine speed to get it about right. Also, you may want to, when you experiment, not only with the screen size, but you can actually put these pipes in different positions. We had it in the middle one for a while. I now have it in, in the third position. Uh, we had a little less breakage at this point, so you can live and learn. We will have it in the second position when it arrives. And when you're done, you can take the peanut sheller off. And of course, whenever you take a machine off, you put the shield back on. We do not want any uh, one getting their hands or fingers in where it's dangerous. That's it for the peanut sheller. All of our machines are somewhat top heavy. So when they aren't attached to the machine, to the power unit, we want to be careful that we don't accidentally knock one over and someone get hurt. So handle them with care. If you're going to be storing them for a while, you can actually tie them up somewhere. We're going to be having places that you can wrap around and tie it to a post just for security if there's other people around, because we don't want anyone falling. Also make sure that this knob is good and tight to hold it. It works quite well, but it doesn't work if it's not tight. So make sure it's tight to hold it at the proper height.